In 2022, the Renault 5 turned 50, 50 years old. And to celebrate that accolade, Renault announced to the world that it was going to reimagine this car for a new era, continuing on from the Zoe with an all electric version. And I'll be driving that car this year. But it's no coincidence that a company out here in the south of France decided to take the original recipe Renault 5 and build a kit to turn this into an electric car. And that's what I'm out here to drive. It even still has a fully functional manual gearbox. So in this episode of The Late Break Show, I'm gonna be driving this and a sister car to this with the same kind of drivetrain in a Renault 4. I'm Johnny Smith, welcome to the show. If you're watching this shouting at the screen saying, I can't believe somebody's converted a classic car like this to electric, remember in the 70s, Renault actually did some experimental Renault 5 electric models. I think they only made about 100. That car used very old, you know, at the time, lead acid style batteries, but it was a thing. So this is not revolution. Renault were trying it in the 70s. And of course, Renault have been making the Zoe now for quite a long time. It's a well-established EV. And the Renault 5 is going to pick up the reins where the Zoe leaves off. The new 5, that is, not this one. The new 5 has a 136 horsepower, 100 kilowatt motor, capable of doing up to 400 kilometers in range. This is definitely not going to be that fast, and it definitely will not have that range. So what is it? Well, under there is the motor. Uh, it's front wheel drive as per the original and because the regs in France are really tight for modification and stuff like this and that's where most of these cars are going to be sold in and around France and Europe. It has to really emulate the original. It can't have more power than the original and it has to not stress out the original suspension or brakes or steering. So that's why the engine is at the front which is a liquid cooled uh, little motor. I think it's 22 kilowatts. Yes, 22 kilowatts for this car, and it has a, uh, a 10.7 kilowatt hour lithium ion phosphate battery pack that lives in the back. And because you can't cut up and modify the car too heavily for these regulations I just spoke about, it does take up about half of the boot. And the reason why that battery pack is quite small and the range is nominal, under 90 kilometers is because they want the car to not feel any heavier, not feel too different. So this is really for a specific market. So although the car was launched in 72, this project actually started in 1967, commissioned by then boss of Renault, Pierre Dreyfus, who was the boss from I think 55 to 75. But what made it extra modern compared to everything else were these polyester reinforced glass fiber bumpers. You've got to think, Back in 72, that made it look crazy against all these spindly chrome bumpered cars. So this is a conversion kit that you fit or they fit to a car of your choice, either a restored Renault or an original one like this, which is just weathered quite nicely. Under here, as I said, is where the motor lives. It would have had a between 800cc and 1000cc engine, possibly a turbo. I did a nice turbo, early turbo barn finder. I'll put that above my head on the screen somewhere. But under here now, of course, you've got the motor down there, which is liquid cooled, 22 kilowatts, um, bolted to a special um, bell housing, which uses the original gearbox, which means you can shift gears uh, if you want to, uh, which I would recommend. Uh, and I'm looking forward to spending a bit more time behind the wheel. And then this on the top is like the box with all the inverter charging gear. But because of these strict French regs, it has to have things like the radiator in the original place. And this is liquid cooled to emulate that because it was a liquid cooled car, the same as the Renault 4. That motor there then is a, an AC brushless synchronous permanent magnet motor. Uh, and it has more power than the Renault 4. Oh, and the other thing is, you can see down there, it has a servo. Because the original car had a servo, French regs say it should have a servo, so it has its own little pump to work that. So if you hear a little noise now and again, it's to keep that vacuum pump sorted for a good firm brake pedal. I love the back end of the original Renault 5, especially these iconic little reversing and number plate lights. They always used to look like kind of strange eyes or nostrils. When I was a kid, I remember those. I used to see loads of these as a kid. 
Charging wise, the charging port here is just where the filler flap used to be, again for regs. This is not a fast charging car. This is designed to be plugged in anywhere at any time where you like, where there's a, a three pin normal domestic plug. It'll fully charge on a domestic plug in three hours because the battery pack's not very big. It's 10.7 kilowatt hours and this could be the potential deal deal breaker as i said earlier because it does sit in the boot space rather than cutting the chassis or the body about so it can come out if you ever wanted it to that 10.7 kilowatt hour battery pack it uses uh, lithium ion phosphate cells that are pre-welded prismatic in modules 100 volts the whole pack weighs 90 kilos which is pretty light all things considered but you do lose about half your boot space but it means your car remains sort of uncut and unheavily modified, if that matters to you. Okay, Renault 5. So everything is stock that you can see. I turn the ignition on and you can hear the clicks and the, the, uh, the checks it's running. There's a little 80 star digital readout, which is the percentage of, of battery. Normal handbrake, normal gear stick, um, normal clutch in fact but so I've let the clutch out and then I'll just go into fur first like that now what I would say is I, I gave this a little I gave this a little uh, flick around the block before we started filming and there's a weird squeak coming from the back which I think is something to do with the tailgate this is a um, this is a homologation car as in this has been used for all the guinea pig testing um, for Club Cassis to get this through all the French regs. So this is a totally unrestored Renault 5. It's done 50,000 kilometers, which is actually not a lot, but you know, you'll hear things that you weren't expecting to hear because you're used to a little exhaust note, right? So no power steering at all. But these cars were so light. But this is an unrestored five-door TL that's been used to develop this EV conversion. So it's totally stock. Um, and you do hear noises and things. Remember, this car is probably 40 years old. Um, and when you take the engine out of the equation, you do hear weird noises. And they did say, be aware, Johnny, this car has you know, been to hell and back. We've, we've done loads of kilometers in it. And uh, that's why it's not a perfect restored example. But you know what? It's a really solid, honest little car. And it's been so long since I've been in one of these. As a kid of the 80s, I saw so many of these on the school run and parked on the streets. They were just, they were everywhere. And these were one of the best selling cars in France for several decades. Very much a single, Good thing is the brakes on this. The brakes on this five are sharp because this is a TL model which came with disc brakes. Earlier Renault fives had drums. And of course in the UK, if you're doing these sorts of conversions, the rules are not as tight as they are here in the homeland of France where they're really, really tight on this sort of conversion. In the past, I've been a, I have said that I didn't really understand why you'd keep the gearbox on an EV conversion. Uh, it just didn't make sense to me. But having, having enjoyed this for a little while now, I quite like going through the gears. I didn't think I would. I didn't think I'd see the point of it. But there is that engagement there. You just have to remember that you don't need to kind of like, don't need, you can't touch the throttle really while you're engaging the clutch. It won't work. We, we were having lots of sun and now we're not. That's got me the stubbiest indicator stalk I've ever seen. That's an incredibly tiny little stalk. So to reiterate, you are buying the conversion, which in France here, you get a really good subsidy on still. The government encourages this sort of thing. With the subsidy, I think the price of this conversion for the Renault 5 right now is 16,000 euros. Uh, it's more than that everywhere else because our government in the UK doesn't subsidise this sort of thing. Um, but I will put in the description the up-to-date prices of everything. Clearly the way it's priced is not going to work for everybody. Um, and with the pending Renault 5, the new, brand new Renault 5 electric uh, coming up, 
this will probably be, be priced not that far away from that car. But my reckoning is it's a different kind of customer. This is not a customer who's obsessed with Renault 5s and is really geeky about Renault 5s. It's somebody that wants a retro car that's all electric with no hassle. You just flick it on and charge it wherever you want on a, on a, on a, a domestic plug. And you've probably got other vehicles. So it's got soft suspension just like its older brother, the Renault, the Renault 4, but definitely a more modern layout. The weird thing is, is in the UK, Renault 5s, whilst the early cars like this, they're quite scarce, they're still not that desirable. So you'd have to really want to convert one. They'd have to have, you'd have to have a real soft spot for one in order to commit. Whereas over here, they're a much more legendary car, I think, in the homeland. Right, we're at a junction. It's in first gear. I'm gonna pull out. And give it some. It still feels retro, weirdly. It's not the sound, it's the fact you've still got the gearbox engagement, which is optional, like I said. You can just leave it in a gear like third and it'll do everything. This particular car does seem to be a bit wayward. I mean, I forgot how soft the suspension is in the Renault 5. I knew the 4 has soft suspension akin to the 2CV, but I forgot about this. And we're rolling on what, 135, 13 wheels and tires? Because old cars had tiny tires and wheels. It was just the way it was. And it's comfortable. Because that battery pack at the back is quite small, the car is not much heavier than the original car, and that was an intentional feature to get through this French legislation of it being similar power to the original car, so that you don't have to modify brakes, steering, you're not allowed to um, modify the chassis, all of those things. So there are compromises here. This has got a higher output motor than the Renault 4. I'm sure so many people have got memories of the Renault 5. I think in France there was this huge TV and billboard campaign calling the Renault 5 the supercar. With this little character, Renault 5, cartoony drawing with an animated mouth. If I can find any archive, I'll dig it out. And in America it was called Le Car, and it was sold in America, it was one of the few Renaults that were. Uh, but it wasn't massively successful. I think it came out just as the fuel crisis was ending, which meant people were upsizing in cars again. Now I'm going down a big hill, I'm in fourth. I could drop it into third for a bit more regen. And you can hear a few noises from the motor, but to be honest, you're more likely to hear wind noise and rattling of trim because this is particular car's an old car. If you were watching this and you wanted to say, oh no, I, I want the, you know, I want a three-door shell and I want a Gordini body kit or I want black tweed interior, of course you can do that. It's you, your car and they don't remanufacture Renault 5s from scratch yet or 4s. You can get 2CV brand new body shells and brand new chassis, but these cars, the 4s and the 5s, not yet. Man, if I lived around here though, the idea of just being able to tootle in a classic like this is nice. I'm personally quite torn about would you convert a really small engined car to electric rather than a big engined classic, you know, with a big engine that's not that interesting, like for example a, a Rolls Royce Silver Shadow or, you know, a Citroen DS, which has a 2.3 litre or something, or a 2 litre, that's not massively interesting. So I, I just pulled away in third then. On the flat, it doesn't feel any different. If I was doing a hill start, I would have probably put it in second, or first and just driven it like a normal car. The French have always been really good at hatchbacks though, really good. It's their thing. And looking around at the, the cars in these towns, they always buy a car, I think, still, that is fit for purpose. The French don't get carried away with stupidly big cars or 
They don't buy cars that are overtly luxury, luxurious. I kind of like that. There's, they're just a bit more honest. This is 100% a niche conversion. They're not going to be selling hundreds of these. But you start to understand it more as you drive it. And I start to, and I am really enjoying the manual EV. So Stefan, most of the time, your business is Citroen. Yeah. I've driven the electric 2CV. That was the first EV conversion. Now you're going Renault. You got with the five and the, and the four here. Yeah. Um, what, how, why? Because, you know, since the very beginning, when we created our, our fit, you know, our fit vintage, the, the purpose was to convert, uh, you know, uh, iconic vehicles from the European production. Yeah. So, of course, Citroën has plenty of wonderful cars, but Renault too, mm. and, but also, you know, Fiat, because we also have a project with the Fiat 500, and, you know, okay. we want to go on all iconic cars, uh, who are, you know, uh, that, that you can easily find in Europe yep. and can be, uh, uh, you know, a project for conversion. So like a retrofit conversion. So the, I mean, this this has been officially endorsed by Renault. Is yeah, right? exactly. Uh, we will, it has been a lot of years that I, I was saying to Renault, we should go electric on the Renault 4. Uh, because, you know, in my past uh, life, I've been working for Renault. So okay. I have a pretty good uh, knowledge of the, of the history of the brand. Yeah. And, you know, at the beginning, they were not so interested. But uh, when they look at the Meo uh, to cover the company, uh, he pushed a lot to create new uh, neo-retro projects for electric vehicles. Yeah. So a new Renault 4, a new Renault 5. Yeah. Uh, and so they start saying, OK, but, you know, in order to prepare those new products, Maybe we need to uh, re, uh, reinvent our, our patrimon, the old, uh, patrimony. And, and that's where this has come in. Exactly. I so uh, those kind of electric Renault, they, they use them, for instance, at the Festival of Cannes. The Renault 5, they use it at the Roland Garros. They were driving VIPs in Renault 5. And they were like, your converted cars? Exactly. Okay. So we did the conversion. Of course, the cars they were using, they, they go through the, the people from Renault Design. They, they make some fancy uh, interiors and things like that. So, uh, it was really, really fun. Yeah. Now these cars are they're old, as in these. Are, you can't buy brand new body shells for Renault Fives and Renault Fours. No, and not like the Two CV has become. No, but uh, what is nice is that you find uh, many Renault Four and Renault Five still uh, in France and in Europe. So there is a, a base of potential customer, I should say, yeah. and uh, it, it's you can find some car in good condition, so that can be a, a good candidate for electric conversion. So that's why with Renault, we decide to invest in the full homologation and not only uh, cars for display. And now we have uh, uh, those kits available for the French market. And I know the 2CV originally obviously is an air-cooled car. Yeah. That's why it has an air-cooled motor. This, these two have a, a slightly more advanced setup with liquid cooling of the motor. Uh, the heating system is a bit more sophisticated. Yes. Right. And what is nice is that we managed to uh, use the, uh, uh, the cooling system from the original car with the uh, ele uh, electric engine. It's good. Yeah. And, and this is because your, I know the French regulations are really tight. Yeah. It's tight, so uh, of course you need to uh, have engineers, people, you know, uh, think a lot about how we integrate uh, the, the kit inside the car. But in yeah. the end, for the final user, the customer, yeah. it is a kind of a protection because uh, uh, you need to think twice be be before making modification. And, you know, you have uh, laboratories who are uh, checking what you are doing. So I think on the long term, uh, it's, most, uh, it's very important for the safety. Uh, and the quality of the product. And also, uh, going like this, we can go industrial, so you can produce as many kits as you want. Of uh, course, of course. Final question. Which one so far has proved to be more popular with inquiries and things like that? Uh, four or five? Alors, I was surprised because there is far more Renault 4 on the road than the Renault 5, but the Renault 5, there's still a lot of people, uh, you know, uh, attached to those cars. And yeah. uh, uh, we have a, a lot of requests for electric conversion for th those cars because they, the people, they said, I can still use it as a daily uh, uh, to go work. But of course, in terms of numbers, Renault 4 is the biggest because they, it has been produced at 8 million units. Huh? So <laughs> there is a lot, a lot of Renault 4. I forgot how many yeah. they made. But, you know, the, the difference is not that big. 
because uh, in the end, uh, uh, I think uh, Renault 4, as it was um, a cheap car, uh, the, the, the condition of the car is not so good. Yeah. And the people are using it without, you know, making so much work on it. Yeah. Uh, instead, the Renault 5, uh, the people who have Renault 5, they kept it as good as possible. So uh, right. th there are pretty good uh, uh, potential for retrofit. That's a preserved example. Exactly. Right, okay. Cool. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jay. The Renault 4, widely regarded as the first hatchback car. 1961 to 1994, what an innings for a vehicle, hey? And of course, this was Renault's response to the 2CV. Difference is, it was actually, I guess, a little bit more of a refined car than the 2CV in that it was a bigger body, uh, probably had a little few more uh, creature comforts, bigger boot, bigger cabin, bigger engine, actually. And this came after Renault's 4CV. Just like the 2CV, the remit was that it had to be really simple, really affordable and rugged. This thing came second in the 1979 Paris Dakar, which I'm sure was the first Paris Dakar. It only lost out to the Range Rover. <laughs> now the electrified version of this uses the same kit as the 5, which I said in the intro. So in other words, this is Renault's first front wheel drive car, so it is still front wheel drive. It has a liquid cooled motor, down on power compared to the Renault 5, same battery pack and uh, same running gear really. And again, because of the tight French regs, it can't have been cut around and messed about with too much. It's all been added on, same suspension, same steering, same wheels. This is a kit, remember? So if you don't like the look of this, I'd rather have chrome bumpers, for example. You're not buying the car, you're supplying the car or having the car built and then converted. So you can have a Renault 4 any which way you want it. You want a 60s one, an 80s one, a 70s one, it's up to you. You can even have a van. Remember they did the vans. And they did really good vans with an extra little top piece at the back for fitting things like giraffes in, if you remember the adverts. Just the same as the Renault 5, the charging point is where the original uh, petrol filler point is. And just like the Renault 5, there's that huge hatchback. There's a piece of gravel in there, maybe. There's the battery pack. Same 10.7 kilowatt hour pack. It sits in the boot, so it does take up about half the boot space, which, as I said, could be a real annoyance for some people, but it's, that's because it cannot interrupt the original construction of the car for French legislation. Forgot how big the tailgate is on these as well. The thing that interests me is the fact that really good condition Renault 5s or Renault 4s restored or just original aren't actually worth that much money so if you're converting one to ev you're spending a lot more money on the ev side than the actual car now that might not be a problem for a lot of people bearing in mind most people who are going to buy a car at this kind of price this kind of conversion price probably people that can afford houses here on the seafront or a boat here in the harbor that's not me sadly so the Renault 5 took a lot of the Renault 4's technology and layout and one of the main differences is the gearbox is in front of the engine. There it is. It's right there. It's part of your crumple zone. And this whole bonnet reveals, which I'd forgotten about, the whole front comes off the car, look, like this. If you can hear water gurgling around, that's because the water's being circulated as we speak through this huge radiator through the system of the car. And they both have, the 4 and the 5, they have heating in the car cabin using liquid cooling. Whereas the 2CV conversions, like the ones I've done prior, they're a simpler car, air-cooled motor like the original, and they use heating in a different way, not liquid cooling at all. It's neat though, that. So the Renault 4 had a hell of an innings, just like the 2CV, 1961 to 1994. But this is a bigger car than the 2CV, and it feels more roomy and more a little bit more refined but not too refined let's not get carried away and like the 2cv you have the shifter up here so the renault 5 that came after this more conventional floor mounted gear shift of course um, this has the kind of hockey stick definitely where this honda civic type r got its inspiration from this is um I think 18 kilowatt output motor, so not as high as the five. Um, still liquid cool because obviously the thing about Renault after the the four CV, which this replaced, they they focused on water cooled engines. 
There's a bit of a squeak coming from the steering column shroud, which I apologise for, but this is a this is an original car that's had some restoration work done on it, but as I said, you can't buy these cars brand new. Um, you can't buy new shells and new chassis like you can for 2CVs. They're not as characterful, I don't think, looking as a 2CV. But I think to drive, they might be a better car. So, I'm in first, I'm going to use the manual box. Oh, I've missed a gear. There we go. So you can leave it in a gear like third, or you can, you know, engage your driving by going through the gears. Third's your sort of optimum gear. And again, this has got servo-assisted brakes. I like this. This feels, this feels better than I was expecting. Obviously, it has the utilitarian charm that brings, that draws people in, like the 2CV. But this is a, it's a, got a bigger boot. It's more passenger space. It's a flat floor car like a 2CV. Just about to overtake a cyclist. We are in cycling territory around here. Um, very close to where a lot of the big Tour de France events climbs are held. Uh, going through the gears definitely makes makes it quicker up hills. But it's just occurred to me, I've actually got a bit of a story with the Renault 4. My dad, in his younger days, one of his biggest jobs as a civil engineer was helping build the M5 motorway before it existed, of course. And on site, they used to use a lot of Land Rovers, probably Series 2As or 3s. But they kept getting bogged down and they kept needing um, gearbox parts replacing. They were too heavy. So the cost of the Land Rover was such that they realised they could buy one or two, they could buy two or three even of the Renault 4s for the same price as the Land Rover. So they bought a small fleet of Renault 4s with skinny tyres to see if it would do the job on a, a sodden, horrible building site. And sure enough, these things, he said, would go through anything. One day, when they were building the motorway, they didn't put any signs up when my dad was going and checking what he needed to check, where the motorway ended. And the motorway ended when my dad was driving in one of these at about 30 miles an hour, off the end of the motorway. And there's a photo somewhere of it buried in the ground. But he said it, it took it really well. It didn't, it didn't totally destroy it. He got a bit of a telling off at work, but he said he maintained this thing saved his life. And he really rates them to this day. It's weird coming to a stop in fourth. You don't have to dip the clutch. You go for the clutch and you realise you just don't need to. I'm actually just going to use second this time. So second's a pretty happy gear. Foot to the floor. So clutch in, shift, clutch out and then throttle. You don't try and merge the two like you would with a normal piston car. Fourth. It's actually really pleasant and engaging and fun. Obviously I'm getting a ton of wind, wind noise because it's a flat windscreened old car. I am not going to overtake on a blind corner a logging tractor because that would be a terrible idea. But I'm going to leave it in third. No, I'm going to go French style and just go around it really close. There you go. Bury the throttle. Watch the Veglia dial climb. <laughs> no, I like this. I think this, this works. Body roll. Got it. <laughs> it's like a ship in a storm. It's like a ship in a storm. There's something really charming and fun about French engineering for the masses and they're just enough mantra. Who needs four bolts on their wheels when you could just put three on there? Steel press wheels, yeah, who needs alloys? Who needs wind down windows? Just slide something, it's, it's easy. Less to go wrong, cheap if it does. I think we've lost a lot of that, haven't we? 
there's a reason why I think Dacias are more popular than ever because they're cheap but they're good quality and they're bare bones you know fit for purpose Driving both Renaults was a refreshing reminder of just how much fun a small, simple French classic is. Neither the 4 nor the 5, if you ignore the turbo, ever had a legendary engine that I'd particularly miss, so in that respect, I'd prefer an EV converted Renault like this to, say, a Beetle or a 2CV or a 911. As I always try to mention in these reviews though, there are some people who either live where piston cars are being outlawed, or they want retro aesthetics with plug and play reliability and low emissions. But for me personally, I'd sooner have a secondhand Zoe or the new Renault 5 electric for day to day stuff, and one of these in original form for weekend and summer day treat drives. Either way, these conversions do wonders to broaden the appeal of this classic car world that's so beloved to us. Thanks for watching, and if you haven't already, please click and subscribe to The Late Break Show.